This, if Jared has sixty dollars, he can rent the carpet. Can he rent the carpet cleaner for nine hours? Can he? Yes or no question. All right. So we're going to say yes or no, and why? Well, nine hours is here, and I see that the y value is sixty-four. So he only has sixty. So can he? No. That was simple. All I did was type in an equation and went to the table and found out what the information was. Nine hours and it wasn't 60, okay? Um, but there is a way that you can solve this. 60 is, an is a money amount, so that's C. H is, remember, our hours. So, can you rent the carpet cleaner for nine hours with $60? Hmm. Well, let's substitute nine in for the hours and see what we get. So I have six, replace the H with nine, <coughs> and add 10, that would be four, Plus ten, sixty-four dollars. No, he cannot rent the carpet cleaner. Okay. So another question: the store also sells the same carpet cleaner for one hundred sixty-five dollars. What's the maximum number of hours that the cost of renting the carpet cleaner is less than the cost of buying the carpet cleaner? So what it's asking me is how many hours could I rent this thing? before I go over 165 and figure, well, I might as well buy it if I'm going to rent it for that long. So I want to test this out. But I want to find H, and I'm given a cost. So I'm going to replace the C in our equation with the cost, and I'm going to try to find H. All right, to do this, I don't want to mess with the variables first. They're like this, They're like boyfriend and girlfriend in the hall. You can't separate them, all right? You got to deal with the outsiders first. You got to get rid of them. So, we got to get rid of this 10. The only way we can get rid of this 10 is to subtract it, right? Because it's the opposite of this sign. So the only way we get to move. So 10 take away 10, that's 0. Or as we like to say, it cancels. But what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. Right? This equal sign is very powerful. So take away 10 from 165, and we get 155. All right, now I'm left with 6 times h equals 155 i got to get rid of that 6. The only way I can break those two apart is if I do the opposite operation. Well, when a number and a letter are written next to each other, that means multiply. So I have to do the opposite of multiplication, division. All right, so I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So H, I find out, is 25 and some change. So um, using estimation, 25 point something. If I go to that 26th hour, I will be over $165, because I'll be over $155. So that tells me that anything that's at 25 hours or under is still worth renting the carpet cleaner. As soon as I go over 25 hours to number 26, I might as well buy the carpet cleaner, because it's going to cost me more than $165. Okay, so the way we can do that, again, in the table. Scroll down until we find the number 165. Well, I find that right here at 26, I passed it at 166. So, at 25 is where I'm going to leave it off, because that's at $160. I'm still underneath of the 165. So the answer, 25 hours is the maximum number of hours I can rent the carpet cleaner before I would just rather buy it. All right, so moving along. What does that look like instead of a table? We have some text that we need to break down. Well, equations are actually in a text. We just have to make sure that we eliminate all those words that the English teachers like to pay attention to. All right? So, a video store charges a one-time membership fee of $12 plus $150 per video. Which of these equations represents the amount A a customer spends in dollars for V videos? Well, the way I would read that, Blah, 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 membership fee of 12. Important, 12. And the word plus, extremely important. It tells you your operation. Then we have our next number, 150, and a huge number, or a huge word, sorry, per, P-E-R, not like a cat per, P-E-R, per. All right, whenever you see that word, Attached to a number, that means that there is a variable there. It is multiplied by some variable. You can make it up, or it might tell you what it's supposed to be. In this case, V for videos. 
Usually you just take the first letter of the word there. But I've crossed all this out. Don't need it. Because here it is. A equals $12 plus $150 per Ritz times and whatever letter is there. B. Okay. Well, I don't want to go pick it with really some letters and get them wrong. Because look, they're not in the order that they have them. Right? Over here, 1.5 comes first, 1.5 V, and also they have 12 V. Well, I need to make sure. I know that V belongs with 1.5, so those are gone. All right, hmm. Well, I know everything's positive, so it's not going to be A either. But also you should know that addition, if you have addition, you can just take the pieces of the equation and switch them around. It's the same thing, because when you add, you're going to get the same result anyways. All right, so this definitely <coughs> looks like this. And all we did is pick out key numbers, a key word, and whatever our operation is. We have our equation. So we picked out how to make an equation. In this case, this question, we're going to have to make the equation and also find the answer, <coughs> given, some, given one of the variables. So we find that Steve wants to repair his television, and the total bill was $125. The repair shop charged him $25 an hour. Well, $25 an hour, we can say $25 per hour. It means the same thing, but that is a key word. <coughs> for labor, plus $19 for parts, all right? $19 for parts just means you don't buy parts four times. You just buy one set of parts, and then you get your TV fixed, all right, besides the labor. So when I'm looking at this, I see 25 an hour, all right, so that's what my variable is going to be. This time it's first, it's not second, because there's my key word that tells me that this number is attached to this letter, 25H. I'll write that down. For labor, plus, there's that plus, $19 for parts. Remember, you don't buy parts over and over and over again. Hopefully, you just buy one set of parts and it's fixed. All right, there's your total. All right, we already know, though, that his total is 125 for the bill. So this is where we had to come up with the equation and actually solve using what we know. So we've got 25H plus 19 equals $125. Remember from the last one, we want to get rid of all the numbers first. These guys are attached to the hip. So here's where the equation is split in half. I subtract 19 from both sides. I'm left with 25H. Darn. 25H. And I'm left with 106. Sorry about that. I had a brain freeze. All right, so now I divide both sides by 25. H equals, well, I don't need to have a real exact answer. I, we have got calculators, and I would surely just punch this in, 106 divided by 25, and get the answer. But I don't, and I only have four answer choices. I know that 25 goes into 100 four times, and 25 then goes to the next highest is 125 five times. This is only 106, real close to 100, so I'm betting it's right around 4.2 hours, and I'm right. So too high, too high, too high. All right? Other thing you can do is you can take that answer and you can substitute it. You can multiply it right off the bat by your charge per labor and add the 19 and see if you get 125. So another alternative route. We're going to have to look at graphs. So Courtney wants to run a total of five miles around a quarter mile track. Quarter mile, uh, if we add four of those laps together, we get a mile. Which of these graphs represents the relationship between laps completed and miles remaining, it's underlined even. They even give you a hint. What nice HSA people. Because that's important. Remember we talked about slope and y-intercept. Slope is how much the graph increases every time uh, the y increases every time uh, x goes up by 1. All right, so it's your constant rate of increase. The y-intercept is where your graph starts. All right. So we know that right here, this has nothing to do with crossing at 5. So right here. Here we have a y-intercept of 5. But we don't have a constant rate of increase or decrease. It's just a flat line. So that's out. I want to look here and here. Well, miles remaining. So 
if you've run zero laps 